When I first got started in the television industry, I felt overwhelmed with the number of terms to memorize. I received this book, and it's full. Yet most of these aren't relevant in video. So which terms do I need to know? Hi, I'm Ida from wonderfulida.ca. If you'd like to add video to your marketing plan, but don't know where to start, then this channel is for you. I upload new videos every Wednesday. We're going to start by defining the different stages of production. There's pre-production, production, and post-production. Pre-production includes everything you must take care of before you start filming. This will include your scripts or anything else you need to source so that you can film. This could also include getting your videographer. Pick me, pick me. Yeah, got one right here. Here's a tip. The more time you spend in pre-production, the stronger, more organized your project will be overall. So do not skimp out on pre-production. Production is the act of actually filming your video. Post-production is everything that must be taken care of to create the finished product. This includes editing, color correcting, graphics. Anything that you want to add to your video is done in post. Which stage of production do you find most interesting? Let me know in the comments below. Now that we know the stages of production, we're going to dive a little deeper to the terms that you need to know in each of the stages. In pre-production, development is basically coming up with the idea for your video. This happens before your script, where you can kind of decide where you want to go with the video, the kind of story you want to tell, and the locations and people that you might need to tell your story effectively. Once you've developed your story, you're ready for a script. An AV script is great for corporate videos. What it does is it breaks down your audio and your video. So your audio is anything that anyone says, and your video is the images that go on top of it. Next up, you gotta figure out where you're gonna shoot. Shooting schedule helps you determine where you're gonna be, what you're gonna be shooting, the types of people you're gonna be interviewing, the types of activity you're gonna need. It's gonna tell you exactly where and when and what you're capturing that day. Next, a call sheet. A call sheet basically runs you through all you need to know for what is happening that day, what location you'll be shooting on, which scenes you'll be shooting, and which people are involved. Okay, now we're ready for production. In production, the first thing you need to know is your call time. Call time is the time that you have to be there ready to start shooting. In corporate videos, we often forget an establishing shot. An establishing shot is important because it gives the viewer reference to where it's being filmed. For example, if you have a conference at Canada Place, you want an establishing shot of Canada Place to let viewers know where the conference took place. Ambient noise, or also known as room tone. Each room makes a different sound. In order for the editor to have what they need, they need at least a 60 second clip of what the room itself sounds like. So for this, they will ask everyone to pause or quiet down for 60 seconds so that they can record the sound so that it's later used in post. And finally, rap. Rap is what everyone wants to hear. That means we are done filming. That's a wrap, let's go. Now it's time for post-production. Post-production, let's get started with aspect ratio. What an aspect ratio is, is the dimension of the video. It's the width times the height. Aspect ratios have evolved over the years. They started as a four by three, which is just a little wider square, and that was traditional television. Then it moved to 16 by nine, so wider, bigger feel for movies. Now, we're more likely to see video that is vertical or square because it has more real estate on our phone. Talking head. Talking head is just a talking head. Right now, this is a talking head. For a talking head, usually the head and the upper shoulders are the only thing that is visible in the camera. So, this is my talking head, and I'm talking to you as a talking head. <laughs> A jump cut is created by adding clips together where the camera doesn't move much. So you don't see much movement and it's a similar shot. Jump cuts can be very obvious and typically you can cover that up with B-roll. So what's A-roll and B-roll? A-roll is the audio, the, the, the talking head that you have on your timeline and B-roll is the visual or the footage that goes on top to complement that audio. Telecorrection. 
color correction isn't really noticeable when it's done correctly, but it's very noticeable when it's done wrong. Depending on your light source, your colors could look different. So what color correction does is it smooths out the differences between the shots so that it looks more consistent. If I were to make this shot blue, now I'm yellow, now I'm blue, that can be really annoying and obvious. So make sure that all your videos are color corrected so they're smooth and easy to watch. Lower third is a graphic typically placed on the lower third of the video. Probably not to put it up to the chin. That tells you who is talking and a little description about them. A slug is basically adding your logo to a video. It can be added in any of the corners and it's usually not full opacity so it blends into the background and isn't too shocking. You can ask for a slug throughout your video. And finally, end card. An end card is typically put added to the end of your video and is a call to action of what you want the viewer to do after they watch the video. I've prepared a video terminology cheat sheet for you. The link is in the description below. Go get it. If you like this video, hit the like button below. If you want to see more videos, please subscribe. Till next time, peace!